Welcome to my lecture online. Here we have a slightly less simple example about the inertia tensor. What we've done now is we've taken our mass and moved it off the axis, off the y-axis before, so now we have it in the xy plane, not yet in the third dimension, in the z direction, so that our coordinates are 1, 1, 0, and let's assume our mass is equal to 1 just to keep things simple. Now we can see that there's three different ways in which we can apply a torque. We can apply a torque like this, causing an angle acceleration around the x-axis. We can apply a torque like this, causing an angle acceleration around the y-axis. Or we can apply a torque like this, causing an angle acceleration around the z-axis. And so that's what's going to give us the three diagonal terms uh, making up the inertia tensor, or the three diagonal elements. We also will be looking for the cross elements, because if any one of those are not equal to zero, that means that by applying, let's say, a torque in the, for an angle acceleration in the x direction, it could potentially also provide a torque around one of the other axes. So that's going to become clear if any of the off diagonal elements are not equal to zero. So let's take a look. The mass being equal to one, and we're going to multiply that times y squared plus z squared, so we have a y squared here, that would be 1 squared plus 0 squared, that's equal to 1. So definitely we're going to have an angle acceleration around the x-axis. For the y-axis, we have a 1 times x squared plus z squared, so that would be 1 squared plus 0 squared, that's also equal to 1. And over here, izz, that's 1 for the mass, times 1 squared plus 1 squared, that's 1 plus 1, which is 2. So notice we are going to have an angle acceleration around the x, the y, and the z-axis. But notice that we have a different value for the one around the z-axis when we apply it like this. All right, so we'll see in just a moment why that might be the case. And then we have these cross elements or off-diagonal elements. Let's see what those are equal to. So in this case, we have a minus 1 times x times y, which would be times 1, times 1, which is a minus 1. So there you have it. If we apply a torque in the x direction, we're going to have an angle of acceleration around the y direction as well. So even though we intended this torque to cause an acceleration around the x-axis, it's also going to provide an acceleration around the y-axis. But in this case, it's going to be a clockwise angle acceleration, and therefore we end up with a negative value right there. The negative value means clockwise, which means going, if you look at it from this direction, it's going to go around the y-axis like that. Okay, let's see if we have any terms here that are not equal to zero. Minus one times x, which is one, times z, which is zero. And then here we have a minus one times y, which is one, times z, which is zero. So only this term right here had a non-zero value, that means we'll have one, well actually since there's a symmetry, we know that ixy equals iyx, so we have two off diagonal terms that are not equal to zero, which means you provide a torque in the x direction, it will have an effect on the acceleration around the y direction, because there is a element in the inertia tensor. Alright, so that's what we mean by a less simple example, we're able to figure out all the elements, all nine elements of the inertia tensor going to this procedure. And that's how it's done.